What's going on guys, Bladezilla here. And today I've got a fancy special one for you. New release of the Shirgorov Arctic Overkill uh, in the new blade material, ZDI-VG, or on the cert says, I think, ZDI-1016. So buckle up, get us get a nice tall cup of coffee. Or if it's the evening, grab a beer, a water, a wine, a whiskey, Coca-Cola, whatever you want to do, I'm all game for. Uh, but today, this is what we're talking about. Real cool, really cool collaboration piece from Sheer Groff and RJ Martin. So the Arctic Overkill. Where do I start? Um, as you guys know, I do these pretty blind to kind of give you my first impression uh, of the knife and not really seem biased or uh, just, you know, run into a reaction. So it's going to be a longer video, I imagine, today. As a reminder, uh, a lot of the knives featured on this channel are available on bladezilla.ca in Canada. I do ship down to the States, but I've got lots of sure Goroffs on here in stock, ready to go. In case you have not been to the site, lots of good stuff. Bladezilla.ca. Some cool ones right now. The mini cannabis is up and a bunch of other ones. Anyway, bladezilla.ca. Visit me, check it out, ready to rock and roll. That's not what we're here for. We're here for this. So, let's kick things off, uh, I guess, with some measurements. I don't have uh, I don't have a spec sheet in front of me, uh, but we'll make we'll make use of what we have. Kind of learn as we go, figure things out, and uh, all that good stuff. So let's get started here. Um, overall length, we're coming in at uh, about nine inches. Uh, is that about right? Does that like bang on? Maybe a hair over, maybe a hair under, somewhere in that conversation. Uh, blade length of four inches and handle length, lo and behold, probably around five. Four and three quarters, somewhere around there, five. There you go. But that's kind of how it stacks up. In terms of comparisons, well, I do have a few uh, that we're going to talk about here. I've got a, an Arctic. Sorry. Well, I obviously have an Arctic. Uh, we've got the Denim Overkill right here, and I believe, do I, do I have my Russian overkill as well, which is probably a real nice spread of knives to kind of compare it with today, and, I, and I'll obviously go through, you know, F95s and Astrums and uh, all kinds of other stuff, Quantums, uh, things of that nature, but uh, these are going to be the kind of three I'm going to focus on, given that uh, they're kind of the closest to this model. And the denim being the most recent of the collaboration piece, um, if you kind of recall, I guess we could probably start with walking ourselves through the series of the RJs where they did the soft overkill to start, which is kind of a micarta handled version or variant. Then they went into um, the Russian overkill, which is this beautiful beast right here. And I think I've done a video on this knife at this point that's up, been uploaded. Um, not this knife, but uh, another one. Uh, this is my personal knife, but uh, Russian Overkill, full tie. Uh, I think it's S90D or M398, I can't remember. M398, I should say right in there. Try not to bump the other knives. M398, but uh, this this one is the one that everyone kind of, you know, in the series they love because it's full tie, it's milled, it's micro milled, it's beautiful, etc. Uh, it's unique, obviously, and uh, less of them. Uh, versus the Soft Overkill, there's a lot more of them available. I think there's like 300, 100 in each color. Uh, and then from there, they went into, am I missing, RQ36, which was a liner lock, uh, not a frame lock. And what else did I miss there? They obviously went into the Molten Overkill, which is essentially this knife in Magna Cut with a Carbo Tie inlay. And then the denim overkill, which is obviously the denim, as you can see, with I think it's S90V. Yep, S90V, which is a real banger of a knife. I really like this one as a as an everyday knife, um, just because it's kind of a different color. It's got a got some texturing to it. You know, it's a real nice fit in hand based on how the actual um, inlays are not parallel with the handle. It's, it's, it's really cool. Really cool knife. Lots of, it's a good feel, good fit. But, um, in terms of the recent launch, look at the difference in blade thickness. 
when I first saw this knife online, I was like, ooh, that's going to be an interesting one because it's light. It's feather light, but I think the, the coolest feature is that it is a 3 mil blade. And I'm going to grab that Russian Overkill one more time to show compared to the denim, which is even thicker. If it wants to focus, there you go. Uh, even thicker than this. So I think this is 4 mil, the denim is 3.5 mil. And then this guy is now three mil, and I'll try, how can I hold these without clunking them together here? I'm changing hands, so I'm gonna go Russian Overkill in the left, and then Denim in the middle, and then Arctic on the right. So four, three and a half, three, really cool. Um, you'll obviously look at the, the designs on the knives, and they're all pretty similar. In the functionality, you've got the four jimps in the top uh, on the handle, right? Which is actually really cool in the Alotex. They did that. That was one of the things I was a little concerned going to a carbon front scale. But they maintain that and uh, really, really nicely done. So there's a nice little spread. I'm going to kick these other two out because we're going to focus more on the Arctic today. As I've done a video on the denim, I've done a video on the Russian Overkill at this point so those can kind of go back into my personal case um, and then before we get started do we want to see some other comparisons I can do F95 today uh, that is the F5 silk slim for reference which will appear big because it's at the bottom of the frame but the camera's pretty over top of it today I uh, will do Astrum custom division as well which is a fantastic knife Absolutely fantastic. Um, we've got some Neon, or let's do Hattion today. There's your Hattion, which is a Neon custom division with a carbon front scale, which is actually probably more relatable to this knife given that it's carbon. All right. Let's kick that Astrum out of here. Uh, we can get into the Quantums. Which is essentially, uh, this is a quantum blue, but essentially a, you know, a, uh, a really fancy quantum, but same size as an F95, very similar size to the uh, Russian Overkill, Denim Overkill, Arctic Overkill, blah, 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 Molten Overkill, uh, etc. And then from there, we can get into some of the other collaboration pieces. We can do the Vegas V cards, which is a terrific Sinkovich knife. And then in the other collaboration series, you um, can obviously do the Kami, S110V blade on that, asymmetric grind, which is incredible in person. Um, asymmetric meaning if we look at this from the side, look at the grind lines, then I flip it over and now look at that grind. See what I'm talking about? So look at the bottom, see how it's a little bloop, and I flip this over, completely different grind. Super, super sick knife, and uh, one of my faves. And then inside the Bio series, we'll grab the Bio, I didn't even look, I think this is the Light. Yep, Bio Light, which is another collaboration piece. And then inside more Sinkovich, what do we want to do? When we run out of knives here, but we'll do the uh, Sigma, I'll put that in the middle which is a super swoopy piece, and then the Paro, which is uh, a little bit different, but uh, Van X and Super Sick. So there's some carbon uh, carbon beasts to compare it with. Um, and then I've got a Stellar somewhere here I can grab, just because we did the Neon, uh, but there's a Stellar in comparison as well. So, and a reminder, like I said, you know, when we compare the knives at a bottom to top ratio, things change. I'd say this is more fitting of the actual sizing, the ones on top, uh, but they do kind of look a little smaller. Um, and then I could also grab uh, the mayo here. Let's sandwich it up top. There we go. Tom Mayo, Dr. Death, probably one of my favorite all-time uh, special edition collaboration pieces, just based on the fact that it's roller bearings. It's all plain Jane milled, and uh, if you know anything about me, I just love simple tie, milled like crazy. I also like having logos on it. 
and uh, just a super, super sick knife. Technology in this one isn't as uh, advanced as some of the others in the, in the series, mainly the Arctic, but nonetheless, very cool piece and uh, something that is one of my faves when you look through the clip and it goes right through the handle on both sides. I think that's just real cool. So anyway, that's kind of it. And I did the F95. I'm just trying to go through the case beside me here um, for anything that I've missed. I always seem to miss about three or four dives after I film and I go, oh, probably should have done that. Um, I guess I'll do a Hattie as well because just because it's carbon and it's beside me. And I guess the theme of this, carbon. So, uh, and it's production knife. So there you go. There's your blue Hattie, which I think I've got a number of these in the store just because I thought I really loved them. And I actually have one in my own case. So I think the blue on this is incredible. And I think I actually have a Halloween one still in there too. So um, anyway, kind of going off track. I feel like I'm at a 10 minute mark and I've really talked nothing about the knife, but uh, let's get on to it. So what makes this one so different than the other knives in the series? Well, it'd be this uh, Damascus blade, which uh, if we know anything about Dama, it's uh, layered steel. Okay, so uh, they roll steel on steel on steel and they keep hammering it and you get really cool kind of uh, rolls in the steel. They're all unique, they're all different, and uh, that's what makes it, it's like a fingerprint on a blade where they're never going to be different. I've seen images of some online already that have tighter rolling, some have way wider, uh, both sides are not going to be the same as well. So when we look at this particular one, which is uh, just for future reference, if anyone wants to know, I think it's number 56, which is written on the inside of here, which I may as well show. But uh, if this one ends up on the site, then at least you'll know uh, at some point, number 56, come on. Is that right? I think it's 56. 55 or 56? 56 of 100, which uh, is also something I should probably mention that, uh, you know, compared to the denims, there's only half the amount available. So I, I would expect these to maintain very high level of resale, given that there's only 100 of them. Um, back to the blade. So when you roll a bunch of cool steels together, you kind of get this rolled effect. So you can kind of see some are going to be tighter, some are going to be looser, that's what she said, and uh, both sides are obviously very different. The main thing here that I think is so incredibly freaking cool is you get satin flats on the primary uh, part of the blade here with that RJM logo and then the sheer Groff bear on the other side. But I think that's hard to do. I don't know how they do that. Because when you're rolling steel in like this, and you all of a sudden grind it, you're gonna have to have very high level of control in order to not show the rolling in the blade here on the, on the satin flats. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not a self-proclaimed metal, metallurgist or anything like that, but uh, I think that just the level of detail to, to pull that off is spectacular, uh, really cool. Obviously on the bottom of the blade here on the grind, if I can get it to kind of show I believe they're doing some kind of a mirrored polish on the edge, which, uh, you know, isn't going to look as particularly clean just because it has that uh, Damascus. But, um, you know, I still think it's a nice feature. It's painfully thin, obviously. And, um, you know, it's, it's a very slicey, very sharp, but uh, very light knife. Like, that's the thing with this particular one is I can't get over how thin the blade is. Three mils, like that is tiny. But they've somehow managed to kind of keep it in a package where it still fits the hand real nice. It's still very RJ Martin, Sheer Girl, Sheer Girl off collaboration. You know, they maintain that, but it's it's a thinner knife all the way around. And I thought the denims were thin. But if you look at it, like even the scales, like everything's just thinner on it. Like all the way around. And remember, you, you know, if, if um, this is your first rodeo, I guess, on this line, just remember, the thinner the blade, the tighter the tolerances are on everything, as that blade has to fit into the handle. And when you have a thinner 
um, thinner blade, you have a thinner gap between the two handles, which makes it tighter around it. Like everything just slims right down. So uh, very cool. In terms of balance, I'm uh, holding it right under and it's perfectly balanced. So they've made, they've been able to maintain that. Unlike on some of the other collaborations like the, say, the bark, uh, the Kaido or, you know, super heavy uh, on the front. Um, but maintain balance, super light. I'm going to get a weight and then we're going to kind of keep on talking our way around this because there's I think a lot of little details that uh, I need to kind of go over but uh, I'm thinking it's under four ounces just based on the feel of it and like I said I don't have a spec sheet yet but uh, there we go three point something three point eight let's make sure that's zeroed three point eight and for my Canadian home braise 1.9 or sorry 109 ounces grant jesus 109 grams so 109 grams or 3.8 is what my scale is telling me and remember each one will probably be different because of that blade and how they configure it and uh and how they figure it out out but uh you know plus or minus let's say 0.1 it'll be marginally different between them but uh anyway i digress so <sighs> The blade, very highly impressive, very thin, and I think that's uh, that's the if if I'm looking at this knife as you know five years from now, um, whether or not there's any issues with it or whatever, uh, I doubt there is. But um, I'm looking at this knife as first and foremost thin, very slicey, um, thin carry and light. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting from it. Now let's kind of get into some of the other details on the on the knife. I know we've looked at that blade quite a bit, and there's a lot going on. Um, so I, I guess I kind of just glossed over. You, you have that RJM met, um, etched into the satin. That is right in the blade. That is not just lasered on. Uh, and then the bear as well. On the other side, which is a terrific detail, I can see myself um, for Instagram doing lots of shots in this area because you kind of get the Alatex, you get the bear, you get the captive pivot. Anyway. Um, so yeah, it has a captive pivot. <laughs> captive pivot <laughs> being uh, uh, on, on the hardware here. There's a ball bearing in a hole um, that's drilled in so that this doesn't spin. It's a, it's a, it's a blank, uh, essentially. Whereas the real screwing uh, goes into the back here uh, on this where you use a shear grow off tool, which uh, on this knife has uh, both the flat bit as well as the reverse custom division bits. So you're going to need a tool like this from them, which are typically for sale at shows. They're individually numbered tools. On the top, you'll see a uh, custom division somewhere if it's going to focus. Um, there you go. Custom division number 47 is this particular one. And just the carbon handle, all five bits are inside, so four flat heads and one reverse bit. The reverse bit is what will do the, uh, the handle, which is cool. Oh, so beautiful. But under that cap to pivot, like I said, is the ball, which prevents it from spinning. So when you tighten this up, loosen that up, it doesn't move around, which is a nice touch. And then obviously the reverse bit on the handle there, which is, think of it as a flathead, but reversed. So chunk of steel in the middle, or in this case, I think titanium, and then uh, holes around the edges. If we flip this guy around the back, we can uh, see some pretty cool details as well. So micro milling, like an absurd level, uh, kind of in a rotational manner. I'm looking, there's, to me, I'm looking at two planes here. So one would kind of be centered around where my thumb is with, uh, fun fact, I cut off a corner of my nail and it's growing back. I apologize. So I'll just hide that in the back here. But you can kind of see on the milling, so there's kind of two planes, right? A rotation, like a what's the word I'm looking for? Like a rotation around this direction. And then it looks like another one kind of starts on the other side because it curves back the other way, which is probably rotation rotating around the lanyard hole. Uh, if, if that looks about right. Um, obviously we're looking at some coarseness changes as well. Um, really, really tight in the front area. And then it loosens up both in uh, uh, depth as well as kind of centering so it changes which is cool all i'm trying to get out here is that that milling 
really changes as it kind of goes back. The milling maintain is maintained underneath the hand or uh, the pocket clip as well, which is a great feature. The pocket clip has a bevel on the side that lands on the track inside here, which means that when you're holding it in your hand, your fingers holding it like so, that pressure is pushed onto the pocket clip, which is then pushed onto the frame instead of the lock bar, which means when your hand's on the pocket clip, there's zero resistance to opening the blade. If you are gonna hold the, the lock bar with your finger or something, then these are gonna be notoriously not good to open because it's a frame lock. So, uh, you know, hold it in the right way. You're not gonna have any problems, but uh, that is cool that the pocket clip is also attached internally with one screw, kind of just on the inside here. I'm thinking you have to actually move the backspacer to get access back there, but uh, it is attached internally, which is a nice detail as well, that there's no screw hanging around there. So super cool on that. And then what else do we have kicking around on the back? So obviously the Alutex, um, itself is uh, inlaid on the back, very similar to the uh, denim. So I'm gonna grab the denim and see kind of proportionately what we're working with here. Similar designs obviously, but uh, let's take a look. So we've got the same milling pocket on the back. We've got, uh, I don't know if I'm crazy or not, but I think the denim might pop out just a little higher. Um, just a little bit, it may not. Um, and then as you can see, there's actually some changes, like, huh. So because of the way the denim attaches, see how the bits are now reversed as well? So on the denim, there's no, they flip the hardware around. So underneath that is, is the back hardware, right? Whereas on the front, you have it here. And you flip that around, and now we've got no hardware on the Arctic, and we've got hardware on the denim. So that's a bit of a subtle design change that's kind of happening there, um, which is maybe a way that they get around getting those frames a little thinner. That's a nice little thing, but yeah, I, I noticed to me, I'll try to get close to look at this. You know, what do you guys think? Do you think it's thinner on the Arctic? A little chunkier on the denim? Certainly a heavier knife. Interesting. Um, on the lock bar itself, we can see, uh, let's get rid of that. On the lock bar itself, we can see that uh, we have a lock bar insert slash over travel stop, which is kind of just peeking through the back here underneath the, uh, underneath the knife. You can kind of see it, but it is, it is peeking through. Um, lots of milling around that pivot as well with a nice matched collar, it looks like. To the back spacer, I don't know what material the back spacer is. I will find out. Uh, but just based on looking at it, I'm assuming that it's uh, probably a stonewash tie. To kind of match everything else, but to me that's that's titanium, 3D milled, obviously. And there is a little bit of a polish to it, or like, a, not polish, but like a stonewash kind in the background. And usually what they'll do, um, just like on the Russian Overkill, is they'll match the pivot collar to that, as well as the pocket clip. So let's grab that Russian Overkill here and see what I'm saying. So hardware, blue, pocket clip, blue, backspacer, blue, pivot collar, ever so subtly blue. So that's kind of their formula, it seems. So pivot collar, stonewash. Pocket clip, stonewash. Backspacer, stonewash. I'm assuming it's titanium. That would make sense. Um, in terms of other details, so Alitex, as we know, is kind of an aluminum, uh, I guess, flaked carbon fiber. So um, I guess it's weaved aluminum. I, I don't know the exact detail on how the, they do that, but I know it was on the, it's been on a few, it's been on a few production Hatties. It's been on a, a few, Arctic's uh, series knives, so pretty cool. The main thing here is it's lightweight as hell. It's got all kinds of, uh, I'm just gonna put this knife away so I don't cut myself and lose another fingernail. Um, as you move this around, the light moves all over the place. 
And to me, that's the beauty of carbon fiber. Uh, as well, what else do you notice on this, guys? What's the difference between the top of the scale and the bottom? Well, let's get into it. The bottom of this scale, from here down, is all micro-milled. So you get the same pattern as on the Russian Overkill, and it's going to be very difficult to show on camera. I know that this is not going to look good. It's just going to look all alutexy, but the left to right kind of horizontal milling that is on that Russian Overkill, uh, which I'll grab here and show, the same design. So if you get nice and close, see how it's all micro-milled down here? That is the same thing on here. Whether or not it's the same coarseness level, but it is the same design. And it's very difficult to show on this because the camera just naturally wants to freak out. And, I, and I'm not very clever with figuring these things out because I rush myself all the time. But hopefully, if I get close enough, you should be able to see it is all micro-milled along that bottom edge. So it's rougher, whereas the top is a smoother feel as well. So you kind of get two textures here which is super, super sick, by the way. So, smooth up top, coarser down below because of all that milling, and beautifully done around here. I'm gonna try to uh, probably take some photos of this area, maybe like some, some seams between and around the pivot. If I can get in there with my macro lens, I think that might be a cool uh, location to take some photos of to kind of showcase, because that's gonna be something you're not gonna see in photos unless they're real close. All the way around, it is all milled, nice and smooth. Internally on the inside of this Alatex scale, there's absolutely zero milling, uh, because it's light, you don't need to do it. You know, On the other side, it is milled out like a, uh, like a crazy skeletonization situation. So we've got lots of, lots of weight removal on the inside. Maybe it shows better like this. But you can see pockets, obviously. So, yeah, lots of lightweight detail on, on the tie side. Zero milling on the Alutex side, other than around the edges where it's all nice and smooth and soft and supple. Um, I'll work my way up to a couple other details, but I guess one of the cooler one is actually on the lanyard hole. So we have a lanyard hole. That's a nice little touch, obviously, but it is also stepped in the milling department all along the edges up here, which I'm, I'm told, and I, I looked up, Alatex is not easy uh, necessarily to do a lot of this work with because you kind of get these uh, layers of carbon fiber that if you hit it in the wrong spot, it frays. If the, um, what's the word I'm looking for, the adhesive, the glue that they use, if there's air bubbles, etc., you can, it can really screw things up in this, in this type of scenario, which causes wastage, which causes you have to redo an entire scale. So to have that look this smooth and beautiful. It's probably one of the reasons why they only did a hundred of these, because it's not easy. But you get a lanyard hole, it's built into the side, it looks great. Um, I think this is going to be an incredible carry. I, my concern might be, um, longevity-wise, how this is going to handle, you know, a lanyard being thrown around inside there and moved and, and etc. Um, that's something I'd be kind of curious to. But um, as you see, lots of layering around that edge, lots of work. They did a really good job on this area of the knife. That's not easy. And I know it's not easy because I couldn't do it. And I can't do anything. <laughs> um, the Alatex, is it a different from one side to another? No, they're the same, eh? Looks the same. Looks the same, and then on the flip side, where the uh, they've matched the milling on the titanium, which is another beautiful location. Hopefully you're watching this in 4K, so you can kind of see all this stuff if the camera's focused. But the same step in milling is found on the tie side, probably matched. Um, obviously, titanium looks beautiful when it's micro-milled, but you've got to get real close to see it. And then now is actually a good opportunity to show all that coarseness on the lock bar side as well on the milling just well done absolutely well done pocket clip has that nice little cutout in it which is uh, another nice little detail which has some more micro milling inside if you look down the actual handle of the knife 
Um, a couple other details that I want to touch on here. So, one, the RJ Martin grooves, those four little dimples, they've cut that into the Alitex, which is phenomenal because they didn't have to do that. And that was one of the details I was a little bit worried about originally because I kind of figured, you know, they don't really like to do a lot of milling on Alitex. It's just not as forgiving as titanium or, or even some carbon. It, but they still managed to put those dimples in there to kind of match the design. And I think that's just like a super, super sexy detail where I know for a fact that this is going to be uh, a product shot. They're going to make that a product shot because you just can't not do that. That's just such a nice location to get those four little dimples in there. Uh, everything else bevel wise, it's pretty well matched. I think all the way around, it wouldn't shock me, but like if you look at the tie side, they've generally matched this flat angle. And then those three lines up top, I'd be curious to see if that's on the other side as well. I wouldn't shock me if it wasn't. Oh, it totally is. <laughs> wow. So I can't show this. Like my 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 skills are not good enough. But basically, these three lines are four lines. These four, the three or four micro milled lines are also on the tie, the Alitex side. And if that is the detail. That'll be where I take a photo of if I can get the camera to show the light. Put like a light behind it to show the shadowing on it. There is there is the same line up there. Wow, I can just feel it. Incredible. Oh, that's the kind of, I love that kind of stuff because it's like, you didn't have to do that at all, at all. But to me, it makes it worth it so much. Um, obviously around the edges here as well, they've done a lot of contour work and another super sexy angle of all the layering, all made by hand. Just so incredibly done well. In hand, it definitely fits nice, just as nice, if not better than all of them. But it's lighter, it's thinner, it's a different feel. So if you've got, perhaps maybe you felt like the old Russian Overkill or the Denims or the Mox, the Moltons, maybe you felt uh, they were a little chubby, little chonky boys, or maybe your hand was a little small, but now maybe it's a perfect fit because it's, it is thinner. It's a very thin, well done knife. Um, what else do I have here? I talked about the jimping on the blade, which is done beautifully well. You can actually see, uh, I thought you could see layering on that if you get close enough. It's kind of hard for me to see, but typically with Dama, or Damascus, if I get close enough, you should be able to see the layering on all the rolls, hopefully. I can't really see right now because I'm staring at the back of a tripod, but maybe you just saw it, I don't know. I'll have to take some photos and get close. I don't have the best eyes in the world. So um, the other thing, RJ likes to tune their detents. So on this particular one, when you load it up, or I should say you should be able to load it up and see some flex in the knife here. So see what I'm talking about? So that detent has to actually break. And uh, I will try to launch this as slow as humanly possible just to break the detent ball out of the hole. And it should, it's known to kind of open fully at just about any angle here. Yeah, that's as slow as I could open that. So beautifully done, beautifully tuned. Um, I believe the detent balls on these are ceramic. And uh, fun little fact, there was, uh, I believe I heard through the grapevine that some of the recent, I think it was the Moltens or maybe the Denims, I think some of the roller bearings used on those were actually uh, ceramic, I think. I never got to open either of them up, even though I have one right beside me and I could easily open it up. I'm simply too lazy. Uh, but I did hear something around uh, roller bearings and uh, steel versus ceramic. I guess there were some uses on them. That's pretty cool. Um, for anyone who's a little unsure of um, you know, quality control issues, um, let's be honest, let's, a let's address the elephant in the room. Um, there were a few Moltens as well as Denims, I did see them online, some of the Shiragoroff groups, 
that uh, had some issues with detent balls. Um, me personally, I have not had any issues. Um, I don't know how they loot. They they some have popped out. I've heard so. Um, you know, everyone that I've seen, or the very small select group of people that seem to make a big deal about it, have sent their knives in and had them repaired. And I think sure off. It's all it's all done at no charge under their warranty. And they actually send you back a pretty cool bead that says, uh, I think I think James posted it in one of the groups and said like. We heard you lost your detent ball. Here it is, and they put a they mounted a detent ball in the middle of a bead. Uh, so so a little little comedy there from their perspective on the situation, which is always fun. But uh, I guess most people just complain about. Uh, or I shouldn't say complain. Are concerned with the duration of how long it takes to get service in North America. Um, I understand that concern, but you know I would rather it be done right correctly and wait a few extra weeks than uh, put a bandaid on it and then wreck other aspects of your very expensive collectible knife. So is it a big problem? Not really. If it happens, um, will they take care of it? Of course. But given that this is a, a newer release since the since some issues, I'm assuming they've made some changes to that and it shouldn't be a problem. I can only imagine. But RJ Martin, super super loud detent, it's what they're known for. It rockets out, feels crisp, nice, smooth sound. No jimping on the flipper tab as well, which is so sick, by the way, because it just fits uh, fits your finger so nice and smooth. Uh, obviously, it sticks up pretty high. You know, there's no kickstop option here. But if you look at the spine of the knife, and as it kind of goes up, you know, kind of eats that up, just from the, the back of it taking over some of the some of the uh, real estate, so, you know, and, and not only that, it doesn't have jimping, so it's not going to catch on anything in your pocket. I think it's done well, and if it were me spending my money, which I did, um, I, I think that uh, this is going to be highly collectible, more so than the Molten, more so than the Denim. Um, it's going to be highly desirable, just based on the fact that the, the, the Tom Mayo Dama uh, Arctic, you know, still commands 3K. Um, so, and, and more, uh, actually, at one point. So, you know, are we going to see two and a half, three k on this? I, I absolutely think so. Like, no problem. Uh, table wise, I think net price is eighteen hundred, so plus shipping and tax. So, you're, let's just say landed, you're closer to two k, depending on type of how you pay. Net being um, to the dealer. So, uh, if you pay with PayPal, you're going to pay more. You pay with credit card, you're going to pay an increase. You know, one and a half to three and a half to five percent fees, etc. So I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me that right out of the gate, these are going to be, you know, low, low to mid twos, um, the day after launch, that seems to be what they'll be. And then, uh, from there, probably just going up over time because there's less of them than the denims. There's only a hundred all individually numbered on roller bearings, uh, roller bearings. I didn't even mention that. My goodness. Where is, uh, Where's my roller bearing marking? It's usually inside here. Let's take a look with the light. So we should have a little logo that should pop up behind the hardware. Yep, right in there. That's that's what we're looking for. So roller bearings um, are like hot dogs. They're, they're needle bearings. So a standard knife will have, uh, in Shiro's world, the standard knife is like everyone else's bearings. Single row bearings, which is, if this is your, your bearing track, you'll have them in a circle. Multi-row bearings will be kind of two to three, depending on model. Bearings in a pinwheel pattern, kind of like the rays of a sun. If your five-year-old kid is drawing the sun, think of it as three bearings. And what that does, it doesn't necessarily help with the uh, smoothness of anything, because you can they're damn smooth. It helps with the kind of side-to-side -side contact area of the knife. And then, so once you go up from multi-row bearings, you go into single-row roller bearings, which is what this knife is, which uh, if you've ever had it, like, it is dreamy, it is smooth. Oh, like, I could play with this all day long. And, uh, you know, the finest knife uh, in the world, in my opinion, is, uh, is Shergroff's roller bearing system. And I can go down my, my knife case here. I've got tons of knives on rollers, and they all just feel incredibly smooth and even my if I grab my oldest model that I have here this is my F95 NL 
You guys have uh, probably seen this one. I did a video on this months and months and months ago. Another custom vision knife. It is on rollers, and I always like to show people this is what worn in rollers feels like. That is just. It's like sexual. Incredibly done well, uh, or done incredibly well. Um, just a work of art. Uh, and that's what this will eventually be like. Now, the other, the other little contact point here is let's think about this. So when you polish the flats, maybe this is why they did this. Uh, when you polish satin flats into the steel, and let's presume that this continues on the way, all the way to the back, because that's typically what they would do on this knife. Maybe the reason they do that is because the detent ball has to drag across that steel when you open and close it. And Damasteel, or Damascus, I guess, if you've had, uh, let's say, like a Stellar Sprint Run or some of the other knives, where that detent ball is actually is rubbing along the, tr the surface of the rolled steel in all those different layers, it tends to be more of a rougher feel. So by adding this satin flat to the blade, and like I said, presuming that it goes all the way back, which I, it'd be silly not to, it would have to be this <laughs> flat. Like, let's, they're not changing that design. Um, that's a very intelligent move because you're going to get consistently super silky smooth action on that detent ball along the frame. I feel zero roughness to it. Nice close. That's totally what they did. I would bet uh, I would bet my mortgage on that. That's like the best feature that I didn't even realize. Cool. Well, that's a nice little surprise. Um, I'm just trying to think here, running over... So I said they're one of a hundred. I've talked about the uh, ZDP-1016, which I believe is what their CERT or their COA said on it. All right, so here's the COA, Certificate of Authenticity. Um, so I was right, number 56. Totally couldn't see that from my lazy eyes there. Uh, Blade Steel ZDI-1016. So I think the official literature on this is ZDI-VG, as in very good. I don't know 1016, maybe that's just a steel term that I don't know anything about, uh, which is quite possible. Uh, but VGI might be like the trade name on that. But I, I know that on the Astrum Sprint Run, it was ZDI... I want to say ZDI-E which was for LMAX. So VG might be a trade name for something, whatever this 1016 is. Uh, I'm not too sure. I do know that it is not a particle metal. I read that somewhere. Versus like Damasteel is. So VG. Hmm. Don't know what that stands for. Vegas. Very good. Hmm. Uh, single row roller bearings, number 56, 2024, which is cool. R.J. Mar R. R. Martin is signed as well as Shirogorov. So if you have any of R.J. Martin's checks that you need to cash, there's his signature. Uh, I, I make myself laugh at, at least. So, anyway, I've talked about enough. I think, uh, you know, in hand fits well. The, the jimping on the thumb is beautiful. You can choke up just about anywhere along the blade you want. It's, it's a beautifully done steel. Um, all individual, all different looks and feels to them. Uh, likely different weights, I imagine. Not by a little bit, but uh, I just think it's unique when you get a knife that's in this kind of category where they all look different. I think that's going to be super, super cool. Um, obviously no jimping on the blade, but those satin flats make for a smoother, in my opinion, knife uh, with that detent ball. Uh, I'm assuming there's maybe a wrap on there. It's pretty smooth. Well, maybe not. Oof. The sound is incredible. Action is beyond belief. The, uh, the detail milling on the Alatex is off the charts. It is contoured quite nicely as well. I'm trying to roll the knife to show that. I know the Alatex kind of hides focal points. So from your perspective, it's kind of tough to see. The hardware is on this side, much like the, uh, where is it here? The uh, Russian Overkill, which I believe, no, holy smokes, stop the presses. So there we go. Another detail that was uh, different between the two. Hardware's flipped on this one too. Wow. 
so I guess on the show scales, that's uh, another little detail. Is you, uh, I wonder if they did that on all of them, or on the Molten as well? I'm assuming the Molten and Denim are going to be identical. Uh, but cool, nonetheless, I, I flipped it. My Carta one's on the sock, maybe. Um, the inlay on the back, to me, beautifully done, and also, once again, just adds to the whole balance of the knife in that it is not parallel with the handle. Uh, we've got an internally mounted um, lock bar insert, which is cool because you're not going to fiddle with it externally, but it's cool. The milling is incredible, the inlay is beautiful, it's got a lanyard hole, micro mill on both sides of that lanyard hole, uh, both in the tie as well as on the Alutex. And then uh, obviously the, the jimping points behind the flipper tab, incredible. Um, I guess the main concern that I, you know, I've mentioned this on multiple RJ Martins is this gap on the backspacer. Sure, you can complain about it, um, but I'm sure there's a practical reason for it. Still looks terrific. Uh, still comes up more than that halfway point, which is kind of all I really want. And then underneath on that backspacer, we should see, try not to hit anything here, we should see a centering point on the backspacer for the blade. And then cut in underneath, there's normally a couple grooves. And I'll shine a light in there just for centering the blade, which are details you don't typically need. But usually there's a couple spots in there. Yeah, you can see it on the backspacer underneath. Once again, <laughs> Off-center is not an option. Wow, just bananas. They do so good with this knife, it's just ridiculous. All the way around. Um, otherwise, I'll figure out whatever the heck this uh, VG Very Good Steel is, um, aka 1016, but Zladinox is pretty freaking cool. Uh, I highly suggest if you can get your hands on one of these, which is going to be tough, uh, to take a look at this steel because it is so cool and unique and thin and light and uh, sharp as hell and smooth as hell because of those satin flats. And look at the tolerances on the centering on this. I didn't even show this. A hand ground blade with like literally zero room to that backspacer. Oh my god, you can't make this stuff up. It's just ridiculous. And keep in mind guys, when I have the camera up up in your business here, that's a 3 mil blade. The tolerances there are so minimal. So if I had like a nice thick chonky blade in there and you're looking at the, the surrounding area, they're typically bigger than what you'd think. But the fact that it's like a super thin blade with the tolerances all around is like a testament to the centering on it, the design, the engineering, the manufacturing, the grind, the consistency. It's just at a whole other level. All right, well, I think I'm going to stop there because uh, I need to top up another coffee and do another video. But uh, that is the Sheergroff RJ Martin uh, Arctic Overkill uh, in Alatex handle and uh, Zladnox 1016 blade. Thanks for stopping by. Check out the website bladezilla.ca. If you have any questions, follow me on Instagram, follow me on YouTube, which is probably where you're watching this, unless it's like 2030 and we're watching on like Facebook video or something. And, um, you know, send me a message. First and foremost, this is a passion project. I love knives, love playing with them, love bringing this content to you and, uh, you know, making, having some fun with it. So, there you go. All right, guys, we'll chat later. Have a good week and enjoy it. Peace.